And God said, Behold, I have given you every herb bearing seed. To you it shall be for food. Genesis 129. Man did eat angels' food. He sent them meat to the full. Psalm 78, 25. Everyday Manna with Lisa. Hi, everybody, and welcome to Everyday Manna. On today's program, we are going to be making breakfast. And you know, many times... I like to eat breakfast for dinner. You know, sometimes you get home of an evening and you just can't think of anything that you want to eat. Breakfast always fits the bill. So today we're going to be making a brunch, a Sunday brunch casserole made with bacon and eggs and cheese and green peppers. We are also going to be making some strawberry glazed strawberries and bananas. And we are also going to be making some homemade buttermilk biscuits. And we'll get into that in just a little bit. I've got my oven preheating for the casserole and the biscuits. And I've got a skillet here, and we're gonna go ahead and turn that on to about medium to medium high. We have a half a pound of bacon that we're gonna go ahead and dice. And you'll notice a lot of times if I'm using bacon in a recipe, I will go ahead and cut the bacon up before I cut it, or cut it before I cook it. If I'm gonna be crumbling it, I think it's easier. And you just go ahead and just dice it, just like about, oh, I don't know, quarter inch dice there. And just put that in your skillet. And let that be browning up. We want the bacon to be brown and crisp. And then we're going to remove the bacon but leave the drippings. And we're going to saute some onion and some pepper in the drippings. So let me wipe off my knife here. And I'm going to get rid of this meat board. And we're going to chop half of a green pepper while the onion, or while the onion, while the bacon, let's turn that up just a little bit and stir that just a little bit while the bacon is crisping up. I'm just going to, you know, take out the seeds and the membranes of the green pepper. You could use a red pepper if you have one. I, I love red peppers. They're sweet, but this is kind of a traditional flavor. You only need half of it so we can put the other half and you want it to be a finer dice. You don't want to have really big chunks of the green pepper. Remember, anytime you're working with a green pepper cut from the inside of the pepper out, it makes it so much easier to, to do that. Instead of trying to cut through that tough skin, if you cut from the inside out, it slices so much easier. Watch your fingers. Slice it into pieces like that, and then take a few of them, turn them the other direction, and there you go. You've got your dice, and it's just easy and quick, and I hear the bacon, it's sizzling. This is a recipe that you could customize to suit your own taste. Maybe you don't like green peppers, you could leave them out. Maybe you don't, you know, you don't like, uh, we're gonna add a little bit of a dill seasoning. Maybe you don't like dill. You could most certainly leave that out. You could add, as a matter of fact, I think I will. I've just changed the recipe. We're gonna add just a dice, uh, or dash, excuse me, of cayenne pepper, cayenne pepper or red pepper flakes or something like that would be delicious in this because it would add just a little bit of heat, a little bit of spice. That's the beauty about cooking. You can change it to suit your tastes, whatever you like. And uh, I do like things a little bit spicy. So we will add just a touch of, of cayenne pepper to this. That would be yummy. So we've got one half of a green pepper. Remember to work with a, a big cutting board and then you don't have to do as much cleanup. Let's stir our bacon. Is there anything in this world that smells better than bacon? I, I don't, I just, it's an instant smell. I can be cooking bacon at home and the boys will come through the door and I smell bacon and they come running, they want to eat it. They love bacon. We want to dice up an onion. And so let's get that going here. Just cut it in half and take off the outer layer of the onion. In the summertime, when Vidalia onions are in season, oh, they are yummy in this recipe. You could use little spring onions or scallions if you wanted to. You could use those instead of a regular onion. You could use a shallot. You could use a red onion, a yellow onion, a white onion, whatever you wanted. You do want to have a little bit of an onion flavor in it. This is kind of a 
a takeoff of a Texas omelet. We've all had those wonderful Texas omelets that you can get that have the onions and the green pepper and sometimes they'll have ham or bacon and if you don't want to use bacon you most certainly could substitute ham in this recipe. It would be absolutely delicious. You could use turkey bacon. If you wanted to use a turkey bacon you could do that. But I'm just using regular, I'm using the center cut bacon because I do find it's a little bit leaner. We're going to use just some regular bacon. We've got our onions and our peppers. And our bacon is crisping up. While that's working, we will go ahead. Let me move my onions out of the way and get our eggs ready to add these delicious flavors to. You want to use one dozen of large eggs. And so we're going to use a dozen eggs. You could customize this. You, if you are on a low cholesterol diet, you by all means could use the egg substitute. Just use enough of an equivalent of the egg substitute to um, equal a dozen eggs. I'm cracking them in a separate bowl because I had a request this morning from my mother who, who said, Honey, I love your show, but could you do me one favor? And I said, Sure, Mom. What is it? And she said, Could you crack your eggs in a separate bowl? She said, Because I sure would hate to see you get an egg that was bad, was spoiled, or, you know, that kind of thing. And she said, Then your dish would be ruined. So she was, she's right. I just wasn't thinking about that. She said, Would you crack your eggs in another bowl and pour them in? So I, I'm doing that for my mama. I got a wonderful mother. And, you know, I can remember... As a child, I'm stirring my bacon here. You don't want it to burn. You just want it to get crisp. My mother, I was in the kitchen with my mom from the time, as, as far back as I have memory, I was cooking in the kitchen with my mother. And we would, you know, she always would let me come in and we would, you know, do different things, do mashed potatoes and cookies and cakes and whatever. So I, I, I started very early with my mom, and, and just through the, through the years, I've just, uh, just absolutely loved to cook, absolutely loved to cook, and uh, I, I owe a lot of that to my mom, and she's, she's a wonderful cook. We can, I can remember at Christmas time, she would always make these cookies that were made from cornflakes, and they had these um, uh, red-hot things in it. You know what I'm talking about, those little red-hot candies, and she would form the 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 cornflakes she would tint them green and form them into like a wreath and then would put the red hots on there to be the holly berries and I can remember making those with her uh, maybe this Christmas when we do that we'll we'll get mom up here and she can help me to make those you need to get your children in the kitchen with you I, I cannot stress that enough you want to use one dozen eggs and go ahead and just beat those get a big bowl because we're going to be adding a lot of things to this dish we want to just beat our eggs well, just like you were going to be making scrambled eggs. We're going to add a fourth of a teaspoon of dill. We're going to add a teaspoon of salt. And we're going to add lots of freshly cracked pepper. I've got to take a quick break. We're just going to finish uh, browning up the bacon. And we're going to get that out of the pan and we're going to start sauteing the peppers and the onions in the bacon drippings, and I'll be right back with you in just a minute. Hey, and welcome back. We, we browned up our bacon, and we took it out with a slotted spoon. To the bacon drippings, we are going to add one half of a diced pepper and one medium onion diced, and instantly the smell of the onion with the green pepper just smells so good. I love the smell of onions and peppers and celery and things like that when they're sauteing. This is a neat little gadget if you've never seen one. It's called a bash and chop. You can use it to chop or bash your garlic and chop it, but it's a great little scooper. Sometimes I'll use my knife and that's probably not the smartest thing to do because you could cut yourself. Because my knives are very sharp. But we want to saute the peppers and the onions till they're just, you know, softened and translucent. They smell so good. I just love it. We have our egg mixture here. To that, we are going to add a half a cup. No, nope, we're going to add one cup. I've got a lot of cheese here, so we'll add one half of this cheese, which would be about a cup. 
to of cheddar cheese. You could use another kind of cheese if you wanted to. Cheddar's really good in here, but you could use whatever you wanted. And I have one bag of the frozen hash browns, the little, the little um, shredded up hash browns that you can get in the grocery store. I've got one bag of those. Uh, and I just thawed them in the refrigerator overnight, so they're, you know, they're thawed. And we're just going to add that in here to the egg mixture. And I'm going to have to grab a spoon, because that whisk is just going to be too much. So let me get a spoon here. And we'll just take our whisk out. And we're going to stir that up. We're going to add one cup of milk. I use 2%, but you could use whatever you have if you like skim milk or whole milk or whatever you wanted. I would not use buttermilk though, just regular milk. Just one cup, stir that together. And then we are going to add our bacon. I better put it in there now before I eat it all. We're going to add our bacon that we browned up. We're going to add that to it. And when our peppers and onions get softened, we're going to add our peppers and our onions to this. Let's stir them and we're going to bake that in the oven. We're going to put that in the oven and we're going to bake that for about 40 minutes. It takes it a little bit of time to bake, but it's yummy. Those need just a minute more, so let's move on while those are sauteing. There's a restaurant locally here that has this little dish that I just love, and it's strawberries and bananas in the strawberry glaze, and I just love it, and it's easy, so simple to make. Just get yourself a bunch of bananas, some good strawberries. Let me get a paring knife here, and just simply slice your strawberries. You will notice that there's one product that, you're, that I'm going to be using that I use quite a bit, especially in the spring when bananas, that has a little spot in it, we'll just trim that out. Just slice your bananas in your bowl. Keep an eye on your peppers and your onions. You don't want them to, to burn. You're just trying to soften them up a little bit. But I use a strawberry glaze, and you've all seen this in the grocery stores where they sell the, the fruit in the produce department, and it's just a strawberry glaze. They come in pouches. They come in containers. You can use either one. It's so good, and I get the sugar-free because Mike uh, needs the sugar-free. So I get the sugar-free, and honestly, I can't taste the difference. They sweeten it with Splenda, which I don't mind to use Splenda. I'm not a, a real big artificial sweetener person, but my bananas have got a couple of spots in them. But I don't mind the Splenda because it's made from sugar. But if you, you know, you could get the whole sugar, the, the, the regular kind if you wanted to. I think three bananas will be enough. And I got some beautiful strawberries at the store today. So we're just going to get some strawberries and I'm just going to quarter my strawberries and we're going to mix these together and we're just going to pour this, the, the glaze. You know what I'm talking about. You've seen that in your store. And we're going to pour that. That one's a big one, so we'll kind of cut him up a little bit. And we're going to pour that over it and let it just chill for just a minute. Let's stir our peppers and our onions. And those are ready to go. So let's turn that eye off. We'll finish that in just a second. But uh, the strawberries just smelled so good, and it, you know it's that time of year. And there's two things when they come into season that I just just eat until I can't eat anymore. One is strawberries, and the second one is asparagus. I love asparagus, but I just absolutely adore strawberries. And in the spring or in the early year when they come into season, and they're just so good. Throughout the whole summer, I eat strawberry shortcakes, and we make uh, dishes like this, and we will, I just eat strawberries out of hand. I love strawberries, and they're so healthy and so good for you. These have got a little bit of um, a white like place on the top of them. You want to be sure that if you have that, that you cut, you know, that off. You don't want to eat the white part. And so we've got some strawberries here. And bananas and this is so easy and my children you know even even down to my, my little ones they will eat this because it's good it looks pretty and it tastes yummy and it, you know it's it's just unfussy uncomplicated 
and it is delicious and uh, I, I just love this and so I make it and, and we just love it I need a spoon here let me grab a little spoon and we're just going to pour this glaze over the strawberries and it is that simple and there you go for your breakfast you have a simple easy delicious fruity healthy side dish to go with your casserole and you just stir it together and the, the glaze will glaze up those strawberries and those bananas and it's just yummy. And it tastes good. If you wanted to get those little um, individual little cakes that you can get in the produce department that some people make strawberry shortcakes out of, you by all means could get some of those and pour this over that. Lick my finger. <laughs> you do that at home, don't you? And that one is done. Now, before we go to break, let's get our casserole in the dish. Our peppers and onions are ready to go and they smell so good. Just stir the onions and the pepper into the hash brown and egg mixture, which is hash, frozen hash browns thawed, um, a little bit of dill, a dozen eggs, a cup of cheese, salt, and pepper, and a cup of milk. Just stir that together. Get yourself a nice size casserole dish. You want to spray that with Pam or, you know, a, a, a spray. I used an olive oil spray today. You can use whatever you have. You don't really have to do that, but the eggs, sometimes the protein, you know, will stick. So you want to make sure that you get all of the egg and out of the dish it makes it easier to clean up and just spread that out in your casserole dish and then because we have a little extra cheese we're going to let this bake a little bit and then we'll sprinkle some cheese on it toward the end hey and welcome back and what's breakfast without biscuits so we have got four cups total of self-rising flowers i've already sifted two cups into my bowl. I'm going to add, I'm reading her recipe here, three tablespoons of baking powder and then two tablespoons of sugar. And we're just going to sift all that together. And I'm still a person who sifts flour. I know some people don't, but you know, I think it's just best. You aerate it and it just gets out any lumps if you might possibly have any. And so we, I, I still do sift. Some people don't, but I, I think it's better too. So we've got all of that sifted together. Get all of that out of there. There we go. To this, we are going to add four, uh, or no, excuse me, seven tablespoons of shortening, Crisco, any, you know, any kind of thing like that. And we're going to add that to our flour. I don't have a pastry cutter here. But you know what? That's not a problem. You can just use your knives to cut in. You want to cut in your shortening. And if you don't know what that means, what that means is to break the shortening down into pieces that get totally covered by the flour. You want to break your shortening down into small enough pieces. Just go crisscross as you can see what I'm doing here. Into small enough pieces that the flour gets completely around the pieces. You want it to be about the size of peas, little small peas. And I think we've got it there. And she adds to this. Now this part, probably you'll need to take into consideration the temperature, the humidity of the room that you're working in. She calls for two cups of buttermilk, but if your room is really humid, you know, you may or may not need that much. So I'm going to just start out by adding about a cup and a half or so and see where we are. You know, you want it to be about the consistency of, of a good, of a, of a dough. You don't want it too runny, but you, you don't want it too stiff either. Just work your flour in with your fork. And let's see where we are. Yeah, I think I'm going to need some more flour or some more buttermilk. These are good southern biscuits when they got buttermilk in them. You know how that goes. And I love homemade biscuits, but I must confess, 
most of the time, <laughs> I don't make my biscuits homemade. Those frozen biscuits nowadays, the frozen ones from, from the, any, you know, your, your major marketers there, they are so good and yummy that I just use the frozen ones. But I do, I do sometimes I will make homemade biscuits. Now what I'm going to do is I've got some extra flour here. I'm going to flour my board with some extra flour. And I'm going to turn this biscuit dough out. And I'm going to knead the biscuit dough. Make sure you got good, clean hands. I've said it before, and I'll say it again. The best tools in the world are good, clean hands. Mix your biscuit dough together. You want to kind of knead it together. And I wore the wrong color shirt for biscuits. Just work that flour in. And I'm going to need some more flour. My dough is wet because it's humid. A lot of times, if you remember, when you've got a lot of humidity, your dough will be wet. So knead your dough, pull it into the center, press it out, knead your biscuit dough. De-biscuit my hands. We're just going to keep kneading these biscuits, then we're going to roll them out and cut them and bake them. We'll be right back in just a few minutes with the final dishes and best part, we're going to eat. We're just going to roll these out and cut them with a biscuit cutter and I'll be back in just a minute. Okay, and we have kneaded our dough and we have rolled it out to about, I'd say, oh, three quarters of an inch or so um, with our rolling pin. I have a little biscuit cutter right here. If you don't have one of these, you could use a glass. That would be fine. And I've got a parchment lined baking sheet. And we're just going to put our biscuits on our parchment lined sheet. Let's go ahead and cut all these out. I love homemade biscuits. I just could just eat them and just, oh, just absolutely love them. And we will, now yeah, that one needs to be, she can edit that out. And here's our biscuits. And let's get these on our baking sheet. We're going to put these in a 450 degree oven and we're going to bake them until they're golden brown and then we're going to come back and we are going to eat. I'll see you in just a minute. And we got our biscuits out of the oven. They baked for about 10 minutes and they are golden brown and yummy and they rose to about that high because of all of the baking powder that's in them. They are delicious. And our casserole is done. It needs to bake for about 45 minutes or so. And it just looks, you know, what I did about 10 minutes before it was through, I just took it out of the oven and sprinkled on the rest of that cheese. And so let's see how we are. And it needs to set for about 10 minutes or so before you, are you watching this? Oh, look at that, those layers of those hash browns and the eggs and the cheese and the peppers and the onions and oh it just simply looks so 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 good and I think I'm just gonna have to have a taste of that so let's get a, a fork and let's just see how that tastes it's hot but it's so good and yummy let's just try it mmm 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 okay it's hot too that's just breakfast in one bite. The bacon and the onions and the green pepper and the hash brown, it's got all of that in one bite. I guarantee your family will love that dish. You have got to try it along with those beautiful biscuits and the strawberries and the bananas that we made and we, we glazed those with that strawberry glaze. Put just a little dollop of whipped cream with a little pretty strawberry on there. We are out of time for today and I'm so glad because I get to eat all of this wonderful food and the crew, is their mouths are watering. So enjoy and I will see you next time on uh, Everyday Manor.
If you enjoyed this episode of Everyday Manna and would like a copy of today's recipes, please write Living Faith Television, CO Everyday Manna, PO Box 1867, Abingdon, Virginia, 24212, or visit our website at www.livingfaithtv.com. Please be sure to include the program number found on the bottom of the screen in your letter so we will know which recipes you would like. Thanks for watching and join us again for the next episode of Everyday Manna.